We've currently just set up what we're now describing as Digital Peterborough, uh, of which I'm Assistant Director responsible for that. What Digital Peterborough is, is basically the umbrella that all digital activity within the city sits under. So we've got numerous projects going on. We've got, uh, we've got infrastructure projects. We're putting a, a fibre network through the city. There's a fibre network going through all the villages that are just outside of Peterborough. We've also got the BT, BD UK project that, that most counties are working on at the moment. So we're really trying to go from sort of the, the ground level, sort the infrastructure out, then look at the next layer services we provide as a council. So we're looking at transforming the entire council from top to bottom. It's not just changing some software, it's changing the entire council operating model supported by uh, more modern cloud technology software. We're also then looking at engaging with the people in the city. So we've got hundreds of companies, web companies, data companies, app builder companies. And it's how can we use their resources to help us deliver services? We haven't got the capacity or the money or necessarily the skills within the council to deliver what we need to deliver. Uh, we've then also got some uh, programs going on around data. We work very closely with LG Inform on open data. Uh, we're part of the Future City Demonstrator, which also has a living data strand within it. Uh, and then onto this one, which is a weather station project. So I'm not going to go into detail about what we're doing with Amazon necessarily. It's, it's more about the concept of the project and why we're doing it. So Peterborough has always had an aspiration to be the UK's environment capital. Uh, to most people, I think we're generally unsure what that meant in a lot of ways, but we do focus heavily on environmental issues. We have green tech industries, we have clean tech, we have eco-innovation centres throughout the city. Uh, and we've also, part of, as I said, part of the Future City Demonstrator, so we won £3 million from the Technology Strategy Board a couple of years ago to start looking at how we, we should operate as a smart city. Uh, so we, what do we wanted to do is really combine those two things. So how do we take the environment capital and, and the living data element and put them together? So we, we've got this plan basically to roll out 25 weather stations across the city. Uh, as it says, 19 into primary schools and six into secondary schools. The primary aim really is to educate the children in the city on the environment and the, uh, the impact that weather has on them, on their lives on a daily basis. So. Uh, we're going into all the classrooms, we're going into, uh, into the uh, physics labs and everything, talking to them about this, working with them, and ensuring that they understand uh, what those impacts are, at really at the micro level. So don't count the red dots, because there's not 25 on this slide, but there will be 25 eventually. This effectively is the area of Peterborough. It's not huge. It's probably 10, 15 miles across from, from the two furthest uh, points. But we do have a, a, a collection of inner city schools, but then we do have some quite large rural areas as well. So we're putting the weather stations into all of those areas and looking at how uh, weather changes, even just on a, on a very small level across Peterborough. Where it then becomes smart is, is we've hooked in with a, a, a company called Science Scope who led a project called Distance, which is demonstrating the Internet of School Things. It's disappeared. A national collaborative experiment or experience it's one of the two I think it's experiment uh, and what they started with was, was looking at putting weather stations across eight schools in the UK and then collating all of that data across the eight schools sharing the data between them and starting to understand again how patterns change just within the UK what we're now doing is obviously trying to bring that down to a, a micro level and seeing how it actually changes just across Peterborough so the weather stations themselves, they've all got the, kind of the top, the things you would expect, uh, sound, humidity, temperature, wind direction, probably things that most of you did at school, cutting the top off a, a Coca-Cola bottle and putting a little gauge down the side to see, see what the rainfall was. Uh, and then in the senior schools, we've gone a bit more sort of high tech. The Casella rainfall measurement is an environment agency standard that we've put seven of those monitors in. Uh, the VOC is volatile orga organic compounds, basically pollutants and everything within the air. So what we want to do is obviously get the, the primary school children in, interested in the, in the lower level, sort of wind speed, how that affects. And then in the senior school, we go into much more detail. That's what the weather stations look like. They're, they're not particularly huge. They're not imposing at all. Uh, most of the schools have been more than happy to take them on. Uh, a couple we had to twist their arms slightly to get them involved, but 
they do now understand what the concept of the weather station project is and fundamentally why we're doing it across the city. It is, a, it is about education, but it's also about how we then take that data and start to map it against other data sets. So as it stands at the moment, the data is published to a website. You can go on there, you can look at all the sensors, you can also see the sensors that aren't within Peterborough, so you see the University of Birmingham, Ritherlington, where Science Scope are actually based, uh, is, is actually the number one orchid propagation center in the UK. Uh, I think it might be a bit slave labor, but they've got the kids growing orchids for them. Uh, but what they have done is put sensors in the countries of where all the orchids are from, and they mirror the temperature. Uh, from, say, South America into greenhouses back in the UK. And as part of that, they've then been asked for the equivalent going backwards because we're uh, basically a farming industry. We're now sending information back to Africa about the temperature and conditions of which we grow our crops in here so they can grow them over there. So taking this, you can, you can click on any of those. You can have multiple weather stations. You can pull them together. You can then select date ranges. Uh, and, and then generate graphs from that. Uh, you can then take all that information, you can pull it off there, and as Chris alluded to with Lambda, you can start to do some very interesting things with it. So the, the reason we want to do it is, is not just education for the children, it's about looking at how we can map uh, something as simple as weather data against other services. So crime, there's a general, generalization that mo more crime happens when it's hot because people leave windows open, car windows are down when they're driving, things like that. But actually, we don't know whether that's true, and we don't know whether there's actually a, a temperature where the crime drops off again. So can we match it against weather data, and can the police change the way that they rotor shifts based on weather patterns that we know are coming in? So if it's going to be between a certain temperature and a certain weather pattern, do they want more police on the streets as opposed to back in the office doing admin? Do they do the admin catch-up on a, on a colder day? Similarly, with hospital admissions, uh, w again, in the cold, we, think we, we know admissions go up, especially in the elderly, but in summer, do they also go up? Are there more accidents? Is it directly linked to the weather? And there's various other things up there that we're looking at, and it's not just those. It's, it's what else can we then take with this weather data? What can we use it for? And actually, do we need to match more than one data set against it? Do we need to match two or three to actually start to change the way that the city as a whole starts delivering services back to the residents? Uh, some of the questions that we have been asked uh, as part of this is no one's ever done a study on when the air ambulance lands at the hospital, what impact that has on, on their quality to, for the surrounding uh, housing estate. The hospital was effectively sort of curved, so you'd expect the wind to hit that and go back the other way. So is that pushing pollutants and particulates over a housing estate, and does the council need to put, uh, plant a row of trees or something in the way that blocks that and protects it? Uh, and until we really get into it, we start to collect the data and have it for a number of years. It, it, it's going to be an ongoing process. Uh, and in a utopian world, you'll get the kids coming out of school, going to university, learning about the environment, coming back and actually picking the data up that they collected three or four years before and starting to come up with new ideas and new solutions. Uh, but again, going back to how we do this as a council uh, in, in times of austerity is, uh, is, is effectively to not do it we push it back out to the digital guys within the city. So we've got, we've got two very, very active groups within Peterborough. One's called Agile Peterborough, and one's called Digital People in Peterborough. Agile Peterborough is a bit more around coding, uh, and, and it's a little bit technical, even for me, uh, most of the meetings. Uh, and then we have Digital People in Peterborough, which is more your web-based guys, your app builders, and everything else. What we've done is we've, we've pulled them together into something we've called Open City, and all of our challenges around data is now pushed to them. So they are actually the ones coming up with the ideas and changing the way we operate and think as residents of the city, but also as part of the digital community. So if, uh, uh, ideally, we get, we're getting most of the services for free, but we don't have the capacity within, within the council IT service or, or necessarily the skills again to deliver that ourselves. And having the residents involved is just a real a real win for everyone because it does put the onus back on them to start to change the way that we deliver services. Thank you.